Hey, good morning. My name is Michael. Mike, Michael, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> this is the FBTV podcast. If you just came across our podcast, maybe you're on our website, maybe you're on YouTube, where we host our videos uh, as well. Well, the podcast, if you want to know, it can be found on your favorite podcast app iTunes or Stitcher or TuneIn or any of those that you might be using. Now, one thing about the uh, FBTV podcast, we're not like these other jokers <laughs> that do these podcasts as well as have a YouTube channel. Most of them, if you will notice, and I'm not dogging them about it. I just think it's kind of, that's easy to do. That's why they do it. It's easy. Uh, what they do, they rip the uh, audio from their video, save it, and make it a podcast. Nothing wrong with that. But you're getting the same content twice if you want to watch the video. And then if you listen to the podcast, you're going, hmm, that sounds awfully familiar. Huh. Then you put two and two together and you figure, oh, man, they just ripped the audio and you wasted 30 minutes of your life listening to a podcast of a video you just watched, <laughs> or whatever it may be. But anyway, we don't do that. The podcast is new content. It's not the same as uh, in the video. Uh, the podcast, what we're doing, we're we're kind of getting more one-on-one -on -one here. The videos, yeah, they're, they're kind of uh, designed to provide training, especially for that individual thinking about becoming a freight broker, freight broker agent. Trying to get that information, you know, should I take the next step? What should I do? How do I do it? Do I even want to do it? You know, who who should I go to? Who should I, you know, you know that kind of thing. Where the podcast, we're kind of one-on-one -on -one in it, uh, getting up close and personal. <laughs> and uh, talking about news in the industry, uh, having fun, you know, kind of a get-together type thing. Matter of fact, if you want to, if you want to participate, you can you can email me. You got questions? Email me. You can email us at fbtv at freightbrokertv.com. Or you can actually, uh, well, you can leave a comment on our YouTube channel under one of the videos. We always get back to those. Or you can go to our website at uh, freightbrokertv.com. We got forums all over the place. And if you got a question, you want to leave a contact or uh, ask a question or whatever, you can use one of those contact forms. Now, if you had a question, you want to take part in these discussions or whatever, you had input, you wanted your input to be heard, well, you can send me an audio clip. You can record it on your phone or whatever you've got to record it on. And, and uh, send it to me. You know, send it to me, fbtv at freightbrokertv.com. Now, you won't you won't find that email address on any of our websites or uh, anything like that. On, only on the websites, you're going to find the forms. You're not going to find any email addresses under our YouTube videos because it's simple as this. You put your email address on a website, and, man, you are going to start getting spam. I mean, tons of it. And who wants spam? I mean, you know, it's amazing to me that spam stuff, it still works. You know, but it must still work. Otherwise, people wouldn't do it. You know, I even get those, what, Nigerian banker scam emails that, you know, people talked about, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I, I get emails from people saying, hey, we caught you at this website where you shouldn't have been. We know you were there. We, we've we got video of you. We hacked your computer and we got the video. No, they don't. You know, no, they don't. And I know they don't because I don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they just say, the thing is, they send millions of those out and, you know, try to blackmail somebody and somebody that, may be doing something like that, think they got caught, they don't want you know their family or anybody to find out about it, they go and pay the ransom or whatever demand they're asking. And, and you know, they probably figure out, eh, it's probably, I got scammed. And they're not going to tell anybody, you know? Anyway, 
Don't fall for that. Don't fall for those scams. Matter of fact, even in our training, uh, now I'm going to Taltoa, our consulting, you know, when we're uh, working with clients and things like that, there is uh, a section in that training that we do where we are training our client on how not to get scammed. <laughs> and that, that comes in the form of uh, when you're doing a carrier setup, because that's generally where the broker is going to be scammed is during carrier setup. Okay, so, you know, we, we cover that. There, There's all kinds of scams out there, and and uh, it, it's it's kind of sad, really, because the people that pull these scams and things like that, you know, if they put in maybe 20% of the energy into doing it for real as they do in their scams, they probably make a lot more money, and it'd be legal, you know? Who knows? Don't know. All right, got some news here to talk about. Last week we talked about the uh, insurance uh, for trucking companies. You got these two knuckleheads. Representatives, our government, Representative Matthew Cartwright, Democrat out of PA, and Jesus Chai Garcia, Democrat out of Illinois. They, uh, we, we talked about this last week. They introduced the Insurance Act. Uh, the bill is HR 3781. You may want to write that down in case you want to contact your local politician. HR 3781. Okay, what HR 3781 proposes to do is raise the federal minimum insurance requirement for trucking companies from $750,000 to almost $5 million, 4.2 or 4.923 million. That's nuts. Now, you know, full disclosure, Cartwright, guess what he does? He's an attorney. Guess what he specializes guess what he specializes in? <laughs> Suing trucking companies. <laughs> you know, that should be illegal alone. I mean seriously. You know, you got a politician supposed to be representing uh, your area or whatever, you know, be your voice in the federal government. And all they're doing is just trying to pass laws to make them more money. Come on. You know, that should be illegal. But anyway. OIDA, they are uh, encouraging their members now, you know, to uh, contact their lawmakers and oppose this bill. Which, that's a no-brainer. I agree with them on that. You know, if, if, you've, if you've got anything to do with trucking, yeah, this is wrong. This is just wrong. Matter of fact, you want to talk impeach, this guy should be impeached. He's not doing anything to help the country. He's doing all he's doing here is lining his own pocket, or trying to anyway. And you know, you know the scary part about it, the worst part about it, is he's not trying to hide it at all. <laughs> I mean, he's just blatantly doing it. Like, what are you gonna do? Sue me, you know? But anyway. Uh fightingfortruckers.com Check that out. They have a form letter that truck drivers uh, can use to send to their respective lawmakers. Form letter states the Insurance Act. <laughs> I like this. Okay, the Insurance Act is a solution in search of a problem. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. It, you know, and. and to be honest with you, to uh, mandate the requirement to have a uh, motor carrier carry $4.923 million of auto liability insurance, I cannot fathom how big that problem would have to be. Seriously. You know, it's just nuts. Uh, and OIDA, you know, they're saying that the mandate could force professional truck drivers off the road. Wouldn't be able to afford their... Uh, premiums and they are absolutely right with that i mean think back to the uh, property broker surety bond here uh, uh back in what 2013 something like that and oh, i'd have had a hand in that you've heard my story about that but anyway you know neither here nor there when it went from ten thousand uh, to a mandatory seventy five thousand dollar property broker surety bond you had, you know, 3,500, 4,000 mom and pop freight brokers go out of business overnight. They were done with it. Can't blame them for that. But anyway, we're going to keep our eye on that insurance. You know, you can too. 
Uh, if you haven't signed up for it, you can. OIDA has a landline newsletter thingy they send out every day. You go to the OIDA website or landline website and keep up to date. But we'll keep you up to date on that too. Hey, check out our website. On our website, if you've been on, if you've been watching any of our uh, YouTube videos, which, geez, I hope you have. If you haven't, you know, do so. Okay, uh, you, you found the podcast on the YouTube channel where we got videos there too. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Okay, we're trying to grow the channel. We need growth. Okay, to do the podcast, to do the videos, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes money. By you subscribing, it helps us to earn money to offset the cost of the podcast and producing the videos so because we want to keep on bringing this content to you you know we're not going to do like some of these knuckleheads do put up a beg me channel beg me page hey please join pay me pay me pay me for the content no you know we're doing the old-fashioned way advertising <laughs> at least we're honest all right coffee mugs and coffee and merchandising don't forget merchandising oh we're we're terrible coffee mugs we have those available the fbtv coffee mug uh, you know, you, you, uh, check out the videos, uh, you, you're going to be able to see me, well, more, the more recent videos, you'll be able to see me, uh, uh, using, using the, uh, coffee mug as well as, uh, showing it to you on camera. Yeah, I give you the full, I do the whole 360 with the coffee mug, you know, turn it around so you can see both sides. A lot of coffee mugs, they just got the logo or the imprint on one side. We put it on both. We got the uh, logo imprint on one side and the FBT logo on the other. So no matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, your FBTV pride will show. <laughs> but anyway, uh, check it out on our website if you, if you want to go look at them. Uh, we have two, two styles. We have the black one and the white one. I have the black one. Uh, it's pretty cool, you, you know, and I, I think I said this on the video, but I'll say it here too. I may have said it on the podcast last week, but, uh, I'll just tell you the, uh, the quality, <laughs> I'm just amazed. I honestly thought, okay, we'll try this. We'll give it a shot, see what happens. And uh, I was expecting it to be a sticker or something slapped on a cheap old coffee cup. But this is an 11-ounce ceramic mug. And it's painted. I mean, it's baked. It's baked in. I, I believe it's baked in. You know, I'm pretty sure it's baked in. I, I'm not going to put it in a dishwasher because I learned a long time ago. I had a coffee mug. Okay, years ago, <laughs> before I ever got in transportation, I was in radio broadcasting. And uh, I had occasion, on occasion, you know, radio stations, they used to get this stuff to give away. You know, coffee mugs and that kind of stuff was always, always a popular giveaway. And more than once, I had taken home coffee mugs from the radio station. And about the third or fourth time in the dishwasher, you know, it, it was... Uh, it, <laughs> The uh, logo for the radio station or whatever was on that coffee mug was washing off. After that, I got real skeptical about anything like that. You know, any promotional material or anything, and I've not put them in the dishwasher. This one, I feel I can put in the dishwasher. I don't believe it's going to, I believe it's going to stand tall. I really do. And if it don't, I will be the first one to tell you. Okay, I promise. But uh, anyway, you got black one and a white one. Uh, your choice. Uh, they're eleven ounce mugs. FreightBrokerTV.com. You can check them out there, and you can even order them from there. It takes about two weeks, two and a half weeks to arrive, and it, and it come it'll come straight to your mailbox. You know, it's not UPS, uh, it's not FedEx or anything like that. They're going to come straight to your mailbox. You're going to walk outside to your mailbox, open the mailbox door, and there's going to be a small box in there that will contain your your mug. Now, I, I'll i prepare you for this. When I went out there and got mine, okay, it was in the, now it was a sturdy box. You know, it was a sturdy box, you know, but uh, 
I was expecting to open it and there'd be styrofoam or a lot of packing material. You know, it's just a small box, just big enough to really fit the mug or for the mug to fit in. But there wasn't any type of packing material in that box whatsoever. It was just the mug. And it kind of scared me. <laughs> I looked, I thought, man, how did this not get broke? So they're pretty solid. You know, they, they it wasn't broke, wasn't chipped. I mean, you know... <laughs> I guess I got that packing down to a T. All right, that's the uh, coffee mugs. Yeah, if you want to check them out, FreightBrokerTV.com. Matter of fact, uh, the two they're at the bottom of each page. You know, we got a picture of the of both of them, the black one, the white one. Matter of fact, if you uh, click on the picture of the one that uh, you like most, it's going to take you to the uh, uh, order page or the page where you can get more information about that mug and. And you're going to be able to see both sides, front and back, so you know what you're getting. Okay? All right. FreightBrokerTV.com to get that. Hey, good news. You know, I'm getting sick of politicians. I'm getting sick of the news media. I, I It just like, and it doesn't matter, Democrats, Republicans, I don't care who it is. We already know, you know, if you got a Democrat, uh, I, I, you put a you put a reporter and a microphone in front of their mouth, you know, already know what's going to come out before they even open their mouth. Same thing with the Republican. You put a reporter with a microphone in front of their mouth, you know exactly what's going to what they're going to say before they ever open their mouth, and and I'll tell you exactly what it is they're going to say. It's going to be something bad about the other. That's that's where we are now. I mean, it, it just doesn't matter. I know they started the impeachment thing. I'm not even paying attention to that. I mean, it's just nuts. The whole thing's nuts. They need to get together and manage the country. Now, what I'm talking about, what I'm getting real sick and tired of with the politicians and the news media and everybody talking about how the, how the sky's falling, how we are headed into a recession. I've even seen articles. I've even seen YouTube videos with the, the these knuckleheads talking about how the world is over as we know it. Trucking has over. Come on. Get real. Okay. First of all, where do I start? I was going to start off with this story, but I think I'll go to another one. Let's start with this one. It has absolutely nothing to do with trucking. New home sales climbed 7.1% in August. Oh, my gosh. We're getting ready to hit a recession. We better go out and buy a home right now because, you know, when that recession hits, you know, we need something to uh, something to have so we can uh, <laughs> be affected by the recession. Come on. Come on. People don't out here go out here and buy a home, a new home. If if they are, you know, if things are getting bad, it just doesn't happen. Okay, it just doesn't happen. Commerce Department said uh, on September 25th that new home sales increased to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 713,000, up from a revised 666,000 in July. So, so far this year, sales have risen a healthy. 6.4%. Now here, get this. Much of last month's sales growth came from homes that have yet to be built. Let me say that again. Uh, last month, much of the sales growth from last month, okay, that's 7.1% in August, much of the sales growth from last month came from homes that have not been built. Okay, if you're in transportation, think about that. What does that mean? It means if those homes have not been built, well, there's going to have to be lumber shipped. There's going to have to be brick shipped. They're going to have to be carpet shipped, roofing, construction. I, I mean, these homes have yet to be built. You know, things are going to have to be bought. Things are going to have to be transported. So if I'm a freight broker or even a any type of transportation company, I'm seeing this information and I am going to put it to use for my business. So it'd be a pretty good time to start prospecting lumber mills, carpet manufacturers, sink builders, flooring, 
Get the idea? Okay. Home sales are up. Going up. Yeah, that's a sure sign the economy is stalling, huh? Let's see, what will what we say here? Still, along with an uptick in home construction and sales of existing homes, which make up the bulk of the market, the jump in new home sales signals a strengthening of the housing market. The housing market is what calls the... Uh, I won't say the housing market, but the uh, Fannie Mae's and everything from 11, 12 years ago, the the people that loaned money on the homes, you know, that, that started the fall problems we had uh, back then, years ago. All right, now, moving on. Let's keep on, uh, let's keep on talking about uh, the recession. Now, I could be wrong. You know, I'm sitting here, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm seeing, and this is what I believe, but understand my disclaimer. I could be wrong. I mean, you never know what's going to do, but I'm just saying from what I see, from what I'm reading, and then what I see on the news and from whatever politician you want to talk and whatever you want to come out of their mouth, it's just the opposite. You know, we're, we're, we're headed for disaster, folks. You listen to them, we're headed for disaster. And what I'm seeing is good things. I'm seeing good Truck tonnage in August. Truck tonnage. The amount of freight that was shipped on truck tonnage went up 4.1% last month. Or, yeah, we're, yeah, we're still September. Well, barely September, but in August. Okay. Seasonally adjusted truck tonnage rose 4.1% in August compared to a year ago. That's according to the ATA. The index also showed seasonally adjusted tonnage increased 4.3% year-to-date compared to the first eight months in 2018. That's good. That's good. Bob Costello, the ATA chief economist, he says a large swing continued in August, but the good news is the trend line is still up. He says, while there is concern over economic growth, truck tonnage shows that it's unlikely that the economy is slipping into a recession. Listen to that again. While there is concern over economic growth, truck tonnage shows that it is unlikely that the economy is slipping into a recession. This is what I've been saying. Truck tonnage is up. Home sales are up. You know, fuel prices have been back down until uh, Iran pulled their little college prank. Now they're up again. But uh, honestly, you know, don't, it's almost like there are certain people out there that have an agenda to try to crash the economy or create a recession when there doesn't need to be one for political purpose. Now, I don't want this to all turn into a political podcast because it's not. But when you start dealing with stuff like this, you know, politicians and things like that, and then and, you know, well, I hate to use this term, but fake news, you know, when people start talking about a recession, I mean, and you got signs all around you showing there really doesn't seem to be any signs of a recession, and yet they're yelling recession. You got to kind of, got to kind of tilt your head and go, mm, I don't know. Might be fake news. Might be, you know. Uh, and the people that are doing that only have one agenda, to try to create something that isn't there for their own personal or political reason. It's got to stop. I mean, this is crazy, man. Crazy. What else does it say here? Trucking serves as a barometer of the U.S. economy, representing 70.2% of tonnage carried by all modes of domestic freight transportation, including manufacturing and retail goods. That means out of everything, railroads, uh, oh, man, you just think of it, whatever commercial freight travels by, Trucking carries 70.2% of the tonnage. 70.2%. Trucks hauled 10.77 billion, with a B, B-I-L-L-I-O-N, tons 
of freight in 2017. That would make the tool man go, <laughs> Motor carriers collected $700.1 billion, with a B, $700.1 billion, or 79.3% of the total revenue earned by all transportation modes. Okay, now, you've been thinking about being a freight broker. You're trying to figure out how much money is out there. 70, $700.1 billion is what motor carriers collected. Now, let's just use that as a ballpark number. If brokers, on average, are getting 13% of that, you do the math. Okay, I'm just using an average. Uh, I understand I'm using that running average, uh, you know, using the uh, idea that a broker will not make less temp- than 10%. And, you, you know, on average, you're going to be around 15 20%, you know, when you're wor- working with the net. And I'll tell you right now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch a YouTube video. We got, we got those videos posted explaining all that. But uh, the thing is, is... Uh, you know, you're going to have some loads you're going to be 20, 25% net on. Other loads you're going to be 10% net on. But it's going to average out. It's going to work out anywhere from 12 to 15% net. So you do 12, 15, 12 to 15% for what that amount of money would be. Out of that $700.1 billion, I do the math, but my calculator won't go that high. <laughs> Too many zeros, man. And, uh, yeah, that's the kind of money uh, we're talking about. In the industry of brokering freight, a lot of money there. But anyway, point is, don't let these naysayers talking about the recession scare you. I mean, sometimes it even you know gives me a little bit of heartburn and gets my ulcer turning a little bit because you know you, you know when they start repeating it over and over and over and over and over, you kind of scratch your head and go, maybe I'm missing something. But then I start seeing what's really happening. I start seeing how the economy's going. I start seeing the real reports. It's pretty obvious somebody's making something up. You know, if you say something, if you say something enough times, you're going to start believing it. And if you start believing it, you're going to start reacting to it. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's what these people that are yelling recession are doing. I think they're trying to say it enough so people will start believing it and start reacting to it, which will create a recession, and that's the last thing we want. I mean, who would want to do that? Well, there's only one reason. Kind of reminds me of the old days. I think this was in Mad Men. Remember that TV show Mad Men? You know, they, they were uh, in that New York City building, a skyscraper, and uh, they wanted to start a rumor or something and they put somebody in that elevator a couple of people in the elevator all they did was ride the elevator up and down all day long repeating the rumor and before you know it the whole town knew about it <laughs> and we're believing it you say so we we, we got to pay attention to this stuff you know don't believe everything you hear forget the facts now if you haven't subscribed to our podcast you found us you have not subscribed to it we sure wish you would you know, we talked about that at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, not only our podcast, uh, subscribing to our podcast, but uh, our YouTube channel as well. Also, if you go to our website, Freight Broker TV, uh, we do have a uh, newsletter you can sign up for. You know, we ask you a couple of questions, but we need your email and things like that. We'll, we're, we're uh, Once we hit a certain number of subscribers, we will be uh, starting to send out those uh newsletters we're not going to spam you with them uh, probably once twice a month anything comes up newsworthy whatever uh, in addition uh, we're going to be doing contests you can win you can win if the price is right now uh, we're still putting ideas together about how to do these contests we're going to have prizes valued as little as $15 and as high as almost $700 available to you available for you to win but you're going to have to be a subscriber. You're going to have to uh, subscribe to podcasts. You're going to have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you subscribe to our newsletter. You know, the more you subscribe, the more your chances to win. And you're going to need to comment. Okay. 
Now, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to do these contests, but they are forthcoming. So, you know, pass it on. Tell your friends. Let it, you know, get in there, subscribe. It don't take you two seconds. If you're on our YouTube channel now, just uh, subscribe. Button's right there below. Hit that bell, too. Keep informed. Keep up to date. Uh, we are really uh, starting to uh, uh, expand with our uh, uh, media as far as videos, as far as uh, uh, the podcast and things like that. Uh, you know, there has been talk, and we thought it would be almost be cool to do a podcast every morning. You know, do some type, maybe a live podcast. Don't know. Those are ideas in the making. You know, you got ideas you want to share? Hey, uh, let us know. You can uh, send us an email or visit our website. Uh, leave a message on our contact page, contact forms all over the place. Our email address, fbt at freightbrokertv.com. Love to hear from you. Let's see, where is it? We got to that. One thing I have not gotten to today, and we'll get to it next time autonomous trucks. Uh, I will tell you this. Don't let it worry you. You know, I, I bet I get a call, at least a couple of two or three calls a month anyway. You know, people wanting to get into the transportation industry, maybe as a broker, broker agent or something. And there's always somebody who's going to say, well, what about the autonomous trucks? What about them? You know, we'll get into this in detail uh, maybe next week. <laughs> I was really going to get into it in depth this week, but we'll wait. Or maybe there'll be another podcast we do here in the next few days. But neither here nor there. I'll leave you with this on autonomous trucks. Would you want to be going down the interstate with your family? Look up when you're going around a big truck. 80,000 pounds. And there'd be no driver in the driver's seat. No one that would have human control. A computer would be driving that truck. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wouldn't. And I really don't think the rest of the country is going to want that to happen either. You know, uh, one day, and it's always already happened with the uh, uh, cars, you know, the autos. And it's probably happened with the uh, test trucks, too. We just haven't heard about it. But one day, one of these trucks, they're going to pop a bit, crack a bite, or whatever they do. The computer's going to crash, and it's going to kill somebody. And that will be the end of that. Honestly, I, I think maybe in some type of special situation, maybe an autonomous truck, no driver, but uh, I don't think it's really anything to be worried about, at least in our lifetime. You know, I think people have big dreams. I, I think there are people out there that are, yes, it's going to happen. Yes, we can make it happen. Yes, give me your money so I can make it happen. Knowing that it's never going to happen. But, boy, this is a good way to get money. <laughs> good way to get investors. You know, because you got the super rich. You know, obviously they're looking for places to dump some cash. You know, get that tax right off. You know what I mean? Yeah. What better way to do it? Dump it into something you know is never going to see the light of day. Now when it costs $70 million. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. Okay, let's wrap this one up. This is FBT, FBTV Podcast. I'll get it right in here in a minute. FreightBrokerTV.com. Uh, again, you can find the podcast on your favorite podcast apps, on our website, on YouTube. You know, don't be a stranger. Keep coming around. Have a have a great day unless you've made other plans. And if you've already made other plans, change them. <laughs>